Hey everyone, welcome to Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through card breaks and the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. Today, we're opening this pack of 1982 Donruss. We're going to look for a Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card in this pack. Plus, we'll talk about baseball in the early 80s, and hopefully, you'll learn something new. Let's get going. All right, so in addition to the Ripken rookie card, there's also in this set a uh, Lee Smith potential rookie card and also Kent Herbeck rookie card. Uh, Lee Smith, a Hall of Famer, Kent Herbeck not. Um, you know, we're also going to be on the lookout for other Hall of Famer, all other, excuse me, other Hall of Fame cards as well. Uh, and we'll talk about baseball in the early 80s. This would be right after a uh, 1981 was a year of labor strife between baseball and the Players Union. Uh, 1982, of course, the year of Har- Harvey Wallbangers, the, uh, the Great Brewers team, and also the Cardinals who won the World Series under Whitey Herzog. And uh, we're going to look for some uh, the puzzle pieces here that we might get of Babe Ruth, the Bambino, the Sultan of Swat. Um, so let's open up this beautiful wax pack. I'm going to try my best to try to preserve the exterior of the pack itself. And hopefully I won't rip it too much. I think there might be some gum in here as well. Uh, no, I guess not. No gum. That's too bad. All right, here's the puzzle piece of Babe Ruth in his... In his, uh, in his Red Sox days, when he was a happy pig farmer in Sudbury, Mass., before he went to the Yankees and it all went to crap for him personally. We won't get into that too much. Anyway, that's the puzzle piece. Let's see what we got in here. All right. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> so, if you know me, I'm a Red Sox fan. This is obviously before my time. But the first card is Bucky Bleepin' Dent. Um, let's talk about Bucky Bleep and Dent. So, 1978, the Red Sox and Yankees uh, play each other in a one-game playoff to decide the uh, winner of the American League East division. The Both teams had won 99 games during the regular season, I believe it was. The Red Sox had a big lead. The Yankees came all the way back. They took a lead late in the season. The Red Sox came back. Tied it up to force the one-game playoff. Bucky Dent was a, a light-hitting shortstop. Emphasis on light-hitting. Um, and in the seventh inning of... I believe it was the seventh inning of the game, which happened at Fenway Park. Bucky Dent... Uh, the, the game is... I believe the Red Sox are winning. And Bucky Dent comes up and hits a, a home run to go ahead... I'm butchering the the exact details of the score, but basically he hits a home run off of Mike Torres, who was a really good pitcher for the Red Sox. He had a great year that year. And it was just a lazy fly ball uh, that just carried out over the Green Monster. You know, Carl, Carl Yastrzemski's playing left field, and he just, like, looks up and sees the ball go over the fence and just doubles over. You just can't believe it. That this late-hitting utility, basically a utility shortstop, um, had, hit this, had hit this home run, but... He's famous in Red Sox lore for that reason. Um, Famous in Yankee lore for that reason. And, of course, the Yankees do end up going on. They win that game. Uh, And they won the World Series that year. But, anyway, Bucky Bleepin' Dent. Bucky Bleepin' Dent is remembered a little bit more fondly now because of the fact that the Red Sox have won the World Series a bunch of times. So, anyway. Speaking of 1978, Hall of Famer Jim Rice. Um, This is... uh, lean period for the Red Sox in between two really great eras for Jim Rice and he uh, 82, 83 these were not great years for the Red Sox they got good again 86 of course but Jim Dent was or Jim, sorry Jim Dent Jim Rice was always the star um, he took over in left field for Carl Yastrzemski he Yaz was still on the team at this point but Yaz was mostly sort of DH first base at this point Jim Rice, 1978, has one of the greatest years offensively ever for a uh, for in the history of baseball. Um, MVP caliber season, and he was a guy that was always in the lineup every day. He played because because that 78 uh, playoff game counted in the standings 
as a regular season game. He played all 163 games that year. Let's take a look at the back of the card. Uh, and you can see, you know, 79, he it was great as well. But again, he, he had, you know, set records for like total bases and um, just, just a, such a great hitter. Um, and eventually years later, he was, you know, he spent his whole career with the Red Sox. He was, Lou Gorman did release him. I believe it was during the 88 or 89 season. I think it was the 89 season. Maybe it was the 90s, one of those seasons. And, uh, eventually he may, he finds his way into the hall of fame. Um, so there's controversy about whether he should be in the hall of fame. I think that him being in the hall of fame opened the door for some other guys. I think that, uh, I think he's spent years as one of the best hitters in the American league. And, uh, I think he deserves to be in and he's in. So Jim Rice also, uh, you know, has stayed in the new England area and lives in the new England area. And he's on uh, Red Sox pre and post game all the time. And we love hearing Jim Rice talk about hitting. So anyway, Jim Rice, there you go. Whitey Herzog, nickname, the white rat, uh, manager. And this is the year that the Cardinals win the world series. Uh, he was a uh, brilliant, known as a some as a brilliant tactician. He had managed the Royals previously. Um, he took over as manager of the Cardinals in 1980. Uh, was appointed general manager of the team. So he was both the general manager and the manager. He was basically the Bill Belichick of, of that era. I think that was a little bit more common back then. Um, he won three division championships with the Royals. Left there and went to the Cardinals where he had great success and again was this was uh the they won the world series this year i think he was also the manager in in 80 uh uh well they lost in 85 and they also lost in in 87 but he was uh he was there and he was sort of well known for his teams being very fast <laughs> the vince coleman willie mcgee those teams they played a style of a brand of baseball that major league baseball is trying to bring back of a lot of you know contact pitching and defense not a lot of big time power hitters like the big time power hitters on those cardinal teams were guys like were like jack clark um and uh but again the, these teams they relied on the defense of guys like ozzy smith and you know daryl porter behind the plate i believe and and a few other and uh vince coleman like i said the guys that were fast um fun brand of baseball that whitey herzog implemented so anyway this is an interesting card to have. This was, again, the year they won the World Series. Al Woods. Uh, let me just, like, fix these a little bit. Al Woods, outfielder for the Blue Jays. Love the Blue Jays uniforms in this era. Um, he was a... Looked like he was kind of just a... Just a normal, regular hitter. Hit 300 in 1980. Kind of cool. Anyway. Jim Bibby know a lot about Jim Bibby so he would have been on the uh, 79 Pirates we are family Pirates that won he was yeah he, that's right he was uh I mean, look at that in 1980 he threw 238 innings just kind of a crazy number uh was the he was their number one pitcher in 1989 in 1981 and you see you're gonna see this notice here that there's some of the some of the stats were a bit abbreviated in 1981 and that's because of the fact that there was a strike that year and I think that the teams only ended up playing about 100 games. And they missed, you know, basically two months of the regular season. Um, and so you see, so you'll see some of these. Like, I think Dwight Evans led the American League in home runs that year, and he only had 22. Um, but anyway, Rick Langford, pitcher for the, um, for the A's. Similar, good, good years. Uh, with the A's, this is, would have been sort of post their championship era in the mid seventies. This was also when um, uh, this is when Billy Martin would have been the manager. <laughs> Interesting years there, but anyway. Juan Barringer was uh, a, a relief pitcher for many years, um, and he was uh, he spent many years. He was with the Braves years later. Good pitcher long career uh long quality career as a as a reliever some years i think he was he did close occasionally and uh let's i just want to look at the uniform again man the powder blue 
It's just beautiful. Still kind of in the pullover era um, for a lot of these a lot of these teams, but that's kind of a cool kind of a cool look. Ron Jackson, Papa Jack, as he is known, years later, he was the Red Sox hitting coach during some of their very good years. I I don't know if he was the hitting coach in 07. But he was a long, but, uh, you know, he used to always say, like, he, and they, they talked about this on a Red Sox broadcast not that long ago, where he would always just say, like, someone's got to pay. Got to get up there, get hit. Someone's got to pay. But um, I don't know how long his big league career actually was. A lot of guys that end up being good hitting coaches were not necessarily guys that were great hitters. Um, but anyway, Ron Papa Jack Jackson. I love that handlebar mustache, too. Burt Campanaris. We talked about the uh, world champion A's of the mid, uh, of the early 70s. Um, I didn't realize that, the, that his first name was Dagoberto. Interesting. Um, you know, and it, it's funny how they say this. He relegated to backup infield insurance in the waning years of his brilliant career. He definitely did have a brilliant career. He was a... Um, he could play all over the field. I believe that he did have one game where he played all nine positions in the field. Um, and yeah, he was well known as a, well known for his base running prowess. Just like kind of a, like kind of just a glue a glue guy on the championship uh, athletics teams. And of 72, 73, 74, someone who is remembered very fondly in the Bay Area by people who were who uh, watched that team, who were around that team. So anyway. Uh, Broderick Perkins. I don't know anything about Broderick Perkins. We can marvel at the San Diego uniforms, which they which they've sort of brought versions of this back through the years. The sort of mustard yellow, the cool brown. Uh, love the Padres uniforms. Really cool. Really cool look. Yogi Berra, coach for the Yankees at this point. Um, what is there to say about Yogi Berra? Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame catcher one of the greatest catchers ever to put on the uniform uh was a manager for the mets and also i think the yankees and then eventually was obviously a coach for the yankees st louis native um world war ii veteran and i mean i could i could sit here all day and give you the sort of apocryphal uh or maybe not apocryphal uh, Yogi Berra quotes. I'll leave you with one in particular, which was when he said, when they asked him about, you know, the things that he said, the, his sort of famous quotes, he, his answer was, well, I didn't really say half the things I said. Anyway, one of the all-time greats. Love Yogi Berra. Ken Kravich, Kravik? Don't know. I don't really know anything about Ken. Ron Say was the third baseman for many great Dodgers teams. And Steve Yeager was the catcher on many great Dodgers teams. Um, but this guy, this was a great infield with um, Bill Russell, the, the baseball Bill Russell, Davey Lopes, Steve Garvey. Um, they were, they, so they were in the World Series in 77, 78. They lost both of those times. And then they got back to the World Series in 81. This would be the year, year before this card. They won the World Series that year. And he was, as it says here, he had a you know big series, was co-MVP along with Guerrero and Jaeger. Um, so there you go. Uh, in the in the in the World Series. But yeah, he was the he was the um, he was the third baseman and Steve Jaeger was the catcher. And Steve Jaeger was a pretty uh, famous catcher for a lot of different reasons. He was with the Mariners also late in his career. I definitely think of him as being with the Dodgers. Um so this is an it. So there, this is mentioned here at the bottom of this card that he suffered a scary injury in 1976 when a large portion of a broken bat struck him while he was in the on deck circle and barely missed his windpipe. Um, honestly, he almost died, and it's kind of a miracle that he didn't die. Um, but that is uh, probably one of the scariest things that you can imagine happening on a baseball field, and it happened to Steve Yeager, but he survived and he thrived. It was a really great catcher for a lot of years. Last card in the pack is Dave Smith. I don't really know anything about Dave. These are, you know, heading into the sort of better Astro years as the years went on. So let me find the uh, Jim Rice 
good to get a Hall of Famer in this set, in this pack of 82 Donruss. So that's going to do it for this edition of Wax Pack Wisdom. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, Wax Pack Wisdom. Uh, give this video a like. Leave us a comment. What was your favorite card in this pack? Who's your favorite player from 1982? Um, you know, what's your memory of opening up a pack of 1982 Donruss? I want to hear it. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what these cards mean to you. Um, and just let us know what you think. Leave us a comment. Leave us a like. And subscribe to our page, like I said. You can find uh, below the links to where to follow Waxback Wisdom on all of our social media channels. Plus our list of nonprofits and charities that we love. Um, I would hope that you would please consider donating to one of those charities. Um, it would mean a lot to me personally. Um, so thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time on Waxback Wisdom. Take care.